Hello Javas, this is the companion video for Chunk 1's Module 5, While Loops. We are looking at the core concept of a quick, a quick glance at for loops. I want you to know what for loops are, because you're going to read them. It's like learning words when your teacher told you, well, the word parsimonious means cheap. You know, we don't we don't really grasp the nuance of the word parsimonious. I don't even really grasp the nuance of parsimonious. But I can imagine there's nuance to be grasped out the word parsimonious. I'm telling you there's a there's a loop structure called for. It's handy for working with things called arrays and other iteratables. And I want you to not be afraid of them. I want you to understand that they are in fact a cousin of the while loop that we are oh so familiar with by this point in these videos that you have enough to hang a meaning on for such that you could either learn more about it when you want to or you will be able to comprehend code that includes for loops even if you couldn't program a for loop yourself without a lot of guidance let's jump in I'm gonna pull up NetBeans and we are making all of this in a class and that class is of course called for loop intro. So I'm going to zoom in over here. I'm going to go to source uh, week five new. Ooh, that's going to make everyone dizzy. Um, sorry. While with four. All right. I have a brand new class. And uh, this is another one of my little soapboxes about good programming practice, meaning how do we learn how to program? And that is, I encourage you to not copy and paste for a couple of reasons. The first is, we want to actually practice coding Java and coding something that you feel confident about. Like, hopefully you feel confident about getting a while loop to work. Doing that with confidence, how many times can I say confidence? Doing that with confidence will build your muscles. It will also build your ability to start thinking in writing statements. This is... A uh, parallel in human spoken languages might be when you learn how to express a sentence, every time you want to, or when you learn how to express an idea in English, every time you want to express that, you don't run off to another room and grab a little scrap of paper where you wrote down the first time you heard an expression of that idea. No, you learn how to express it your own way, with your own nuance. It, it takes on meaning as you express it. This is a very philosophical way of saying don't copy and paste. So I'm going to get a main method p public static void main tab. We're good to go there. Uh, the goal of this activity is to show you that a uh, while uh, uh, while loop can do anything a for loop can, but a for loop uh, condenses tasks. So to do that, in order to illustrate this, I need to have a while loop, and then I'm going to try to duplicate the exact output that the while loop gives me using the for structure. That's the clearest way that I can think of to demonstrate to you how the for loop works at this particular point in Java. I want to include the user input in this, so I can start building that. But at first, I want to make a little plan. So I want a while loop to go as many times as the user wants. So I need to um, initiate, uh, I need to declare variables, one for counter, one for upper bound. I'm writing in English first. Make a scanner object. Prompt user. Get integer from the user. Loop. Uh, x times and that should be it you can see I wrote an English plan for this program in about a minute now I wrote the plan in the past so I can do it a little bit faster than you probably can but I did that to demonstrate that I think you should write English plans in your code like I did the fact that I can do it is because I have done it a lot in the past okay so I'm sitting here this was my goal so we could say specification of this program is I can use my uh, alt con or my shift alt up and down arrows to move those around I can use my control X to cut lines I'm going to import a scanner object that is in the package Java util and scanner so I'm going to declare my variables I need my int 
loop control and I am going to not initialize it to anything then I need to make a scanner object I need a variable uh, that is of type scanner and then I use the new keyword to create that scanner so then I can ask the user for some input how uh, many times should I loop with four and then I know I have my scanner object sitting it's sitting and chilling the way I go rouse it from its sleep is by calling a method on that scanner object so I'm gonna put my method call on the right hand side of my assignment statement so I'm gonna say hey my scanner hey my scanner I would need the next int that you can read from the user and it says, great, where are you going to put it? Well, I'm going to put it in a nicely typed integer variable called loop control. Let's pause here. I want to prove to you that Java is still a strongly typed language. Let's imagine I come back here and declare that this variable loop control is in fact a string, source text. So I change the type of the variable when it was initialized. That's the only time you can declare and therefore change the type of a variable. The error that I get is expected under my, uh, when I'm trying to store my new scanner object. Uh, I, need, I forgot the new keywords. There we go. Um, it says my package scanner does not exist. Ah, because it wasn't my scanner. I already made my scanner. Whoosh, I'm getting tired. Okay, so it says I cannot store a string in a, uh, an, an integer in a string type variable, meaning int, the thing the scanner is going to send out, meaning the, the value or the type of what's on the right is incompatible with the type that you declared for the container that you wanted me to store the user's input in. So uh, that is a confirmation. You should make that deliberate mistake and read the error message for yourself so that you can own that error message and it won't ever intimidate you again. Okay, let's get our while loop going just for a second. So this is our classic structure. So we can say while. Now I'm going to need... Wait, I need to I need to have something to start at zero. So we'll say int i equals zero right before then. So while i is less than num loops, and then I want to display, uh, oh, it's called loop control. System out print line. So number of times, let's say value of i, and then put i in there. After I print out the value of i, I need to increment value of i by 1. This closes while loop. This closes main. Ooh, notice how that worked. If I, ooh, well, I'm going to zoom out so you can see. Notice that when I encounter a closing curly brace, or in fact an open curly brace, a block marker appears on the left-hand side of your NetBeans code. This nice little line of white is showing us where the ending curly brace for whatever curly brace line I'm on exists. And so we can see that I'm closing, in fact, the block of code that was begun with this line. So I am closing my main method. And I'm closing class while with four. Okay. We're proving that this works. Shift F6. How many times do I want to loop? Well, I want to loop 20 times. 0 through 19 inclusive is 20. Okay, so the for loop is a condensed version of this while loop. Let's zoom in and see. The only things that we're replacing in this program, the only ones are the lines in which we declare this little temporary variable. I is kind of this silly little thing. For some reason, I need a line of code before while to declare a variable, and it's going to be 0, and then I'm just going to count up from there until I get to 1 less than loop control. Now, because I need that to increment each time I loop, I have to include another line of code that increments i by 1. The for loop takes this line with the initializing i and this line with the incrementing i and squishes it together with the control statement. 
And so this is a little bit of a cool somersault I'm going to do. In fact, I haven't done this before. I'm going to change the while to 4, and then watch what I'm going to do. I'm just going to take this expression, or excuse me, this assignment statement, this variable declaration and assignment statement, I'm going to cut it with control X. I'm going to paste it directly inside my parentheses for my for loop. Now it's unhappy because I haven't done everything I need to. It says semicolon expected. The reason is I'm going to do this again and I'm going to do it at the end of my true false statement. And what I'm going to do in that is I'm going to move my uh, increment uh, operation. So I'm going to grab that. I don't need that semicolon. I used my end key to jump to the end. I pasted in the increment statement and suddenly all of my errors went away. I didn't write any new code to make my for loop from the while. I just mushed it around. And the nice diagram that I gave you, let me zoom out. I spent some, some sweat and tears getting this one to look right. Let's look at for. So I have made little boxes for you to show you how the for loop is structured. And if we look at that line of the for loop, we can see that the instructions for the for loop are delimited or separated by two semicolons for a total of three different instructions. The instruction that is before the first semicolon is run once. We usually use it to make that variable that starts with zero and we use to count up. The middle component of the for loop is exactly the same as the while loop. It's exactly the same as the control structure for the if statement. It's simply an expression that evaluates to either true or false. The statement that occurs after the second semicolon, meaning the third piece of information we give for, is the iteration expression. And this, excuse me, the iteration statement. The iteration statement is run once after each time through the for loop. What this does is it allows us to neatly declare the structure of the loop that follows. It allows us to not confuse lines of code that are inside the actual looping body with loop uh, variables that are just maintaining that. So remember how this statement i equals i plus 1, we originally had it down here. If I'm reading the code as a fresh reader, maybe that's myself in two years, I have to wonder, was this i equals i plus 1, is that working with some important variable for the whole program? Like, say, the uh, total score that someone got on a little math quiz that's counting up each time they answer a question? It's not. The only reason I'm using i is because I need to control how many times this loop runs. So let's just squish it together on the same row and we'll call it a for loop. I'm going to do a control s for save. I'm going to run it. We have output here. How many times? I said 20, right? 0 through 19 inclusive. We have looped 20 times. Let's look at the specification. A while loop can do anything a for loop can do, but a for loop condenses tasks. I think we proved that. Nice work. Enjoy the for. Tinker around with it. And if you were feeling a bit overwhelmed, that was the for loop. You can say goodbye. If you like for loops, um, you can go read about for loops and arrays. Those are usually the two structures that are used together. And with that, happy Java-ing.